So as I sat with this text this week, a question came to me that I want to ask you. Who is the person in your life that taught you how to give? Your mother, your parents, your granddaughter, your grandmother, anyone else? Who taught you how to give? What are some of the ways they went about that? <clears throat> How did they teach you? What did they teach you? By their example. Yeah. Yeah, when I was in high school, we moved. Between my sophomore and junior year, which is a really awkward time for a high schooler to move, I just have to tell you, you totally lose your groove. Um, so there I was in a brand new high school and had to start all over, all new relationships. And when I was at church, I met a girl named Becca. And she befriended me. She was that shining example that walked me through that process. She invited me into youth group. She invited me into the relationships that she had already made. She was that person. She gave of her time and herself. She invited me into her home. I got to eat meals with her family, hang out and play with her sisters. I mean, she really was that person for me. She had that generous spirit. spirit. And it wasn't like she gave me a lot of stuff. Her family didn't have a lot of money. But what she gave me was so much more. It's amazing what generosity can do. And it's amazing how that example of generosity teaches us. And to me, that's what this gospel story is all about that we are given today. Mary's example of generosity and love. Have you ever seen um, a movie? You're in the middle of a movie, all this stuff is going on and you get to this chaotic scene and then all of a sudden it kind of zooms in on two people and it's slow-mo and the music gets all soft. That's kind of what I imagine this scene was like. This just zoomed in focus on Mary and Jesus as she gives him this great gift. Now there's lots of details given in this story. And like any good movie plot, I kind of like to pick it apart. I don't know about you. But uh, this is one of the books I got in seminary. I thought I'd drag it out and use it. Um, this story that we have in our gospel today is one of a very few number of stories that actually appear in all four of our gospel accounts. It's unusual, and the details aren't the same in every gospel. The ones that are the same intrigue me, and the details that are different intrigue me, so I wanted to invite you into that, into a little, this is me nerding out on biblical stuff, and I want to share that with you. I'm sure you're excited about it. <laughs> so all four of the stories in our Gospels, all four of them start in or Bethany. Luke says it's a few miles from Jerusalem, which Bethany was, so it could still be the same place, which is good. Um, but the place that the meal is happening differs. Matthew and Mark say that the, this meal is happening at the home of Simon the leper. Luke has this meal happening in a Pharisee's house, which to me is a little weird. Um, and John, of course, has this meal happening at the home of Lazarus, who we learned last week 
had died, and the stench was great. In the King James, it says, he stinketh. <laughs> just, just a great word. Um, so this was the home of Mary and Martha and Lazarus, a place Jesus had spent a lot of time. Now, who is doing the anointing is different in Matthew and Mark. The, um, the person is just called a woman, some woman, anointed Jesus. In Luke, it is a woman of the city who is a sinner. Important little detail there. And in John, it is Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. An alabaster flask of pure nard, the same in all of them. And then in Matthew and Mark, she anoints his feet. And in Luke and John, she anoints his head. Now only three of them have this bit about selling the oil as um, money for the poor. Luke was still caught up in the sinful woman and you know, how dare Jesus let a sinful woman touch him. Um, so he didn't really talk about the poor very much. Um, and Jesus speaks about forgiveness in Luke. In John, it's not about forgiveness. That's not where John is focused. John is focused only on glory, on Mary lifting up and honoring Jesus, giving God the glory. So there's a little shock and awe value to this story. But for me, it's mainly about relationships. Mary's brother had just been raised from the dead. And maybe Mary was relying on her intuition. Maybe Mary had a hunch that there was more to death, more death to attend to, and that it wasn't all over. See the foreshadowing that we talked about last week, that, G, that Lazarus's death and resurrection was foreshadowing what happened, what would happen to Jesus. John is still doing some good foreshadowing here. As Mary anoints Jesus' body for burial. And the washing of the disciples' feet that will come at the next meal when they all sit down to recline and eat dinner together. See, I don't know about you, but for me, uh, giving has always been easier when someone gives to me first. Then I have this little nagging sense, like I should do something. They gave me this thing and I should get them something really nice, right? Is it, am I the only one that feels that way? Maybe I am. Uh, we have this gift that's been given to us by Jesus. This great gift. And I think that's where Mary was. She gave the only thing she really had. There are some scholars that say that alabaster jar of pure ointment, pure nard, was like a dowry for her. It was her safety, her security, um, the way she would uh, find someone to be in relationship with that would protect her, support her, give her a family, that was what she had. That was it. And she broke that all at the feet of Jesus and gave him what she had to give. See, Mary here is being the exemplary disciple. The rest of the disciples through most of the Gospels don't get it, right? They're the ones that are kind of falling down on the job going, wait, what's happening? I don't know what's going on. But Mary gets it. She's the one. And she's giving back the only way she knows how. So friends, I'd like to 
offer you an invitation this week. I'd like you to spend some time throughout the week thinking about those people in your life that have taught you how to give, that have been that person for you, that have showed up when you needed someone, that have walked with you through the tough times, that have celebrated with you in the good times. I want you to think about those people and I want you to write them down, whether they're people that are still here today or they've gone on to be with Jesus, I want you to think about them, I want you to remember them, I want you to remember those times. Because I think that puts us in a spirit of generosity. And it reminds us of the call that we are to have. And when we're thinking about all of the things we've been given, how can we help but give back to others and to be that example of generosity and love for other people? So I invite you to try that out this week. And I pray that God gives us the strength and the wisdom and um, the spirit of love that flows through us, that we may feel so full of God's love that all we can do is spill it out to all those we come in contact with. In Jesus' name, amen. As you are mindful of those people that have popped up in your head, I invite you in our time of intercessory prayer to silently or lightly under your breath to name the names of those kind of like a babbling brook those who have demonstrated generosity and, and blessed you in your life. We might bring their names before God as a prayer of thanksgiving. So let's pray for the world, for our community, for our church community, all churches scattered throughout the world. We may indeed uh, lift these petitions, these prayers before our God. Will you pray with me? Life-giving God, since before the foundation of the world, you were aware that we would one day walk on the face of this earth. You knew of our shortcomings, you knew of our failures. You knew the struggles that some of us would face in life early in our lives, some of us in the midpoint of our lives, some of us having struggles that come upon us in the later stages of life. You would be aware, O oh God, for those of us who have been distant from you, for those of us who have really struggled with the reality of who you are, some of us, I found it hard to believe that you could love me, even me. That your word reminds us, your promise comes to us. It tells us that you persist in seeking us out. That you desire that kind of relationship that you, Jesus, had with people like Mary and her sister Martha and her brother Lazarus. People who you would spend time with on your way in and out of the holy city, Jerusalem. People you would spend time with even as your life was drawing to a close desire that kind of relationship, God, that kind of intimacy with you. Help us to bring ourselves before you, to find confidence that as we open our hearts and our minds, that you come to us to embrace us. Let us feel the assurance of your presence in our life. Lord, in your mercy. As we prepare to come to your table today, God, we rejoice in the gift of this meal. Open our eyes to see and our minds to ponder and our hearts to receive the assurance of the forgiveness that you give to us in your body and in your blood. May it be like your arms wrapped around us as we bear you to our families, as we bear you to the world, in our schools, in our workplaces, 
in our community and in our neighborhoods. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our sister congregations in Tanzania, for Esther Christopher, who on this past Sunday chance to baptize his new grandson, Christian. Thank you for healing Christian, who was in the hospital earlier this week, for the joy that's there with sister churches like Kezaria, Bethania, and Nazarathani. We ask, Lord, that you would bless these sister churches with the assurance of your purpose and of your love and of your grace that sustains them, the ways in which you provide for them. A people with little material wealth, but have hearts of tremendous generosity. And we pray for GPS Faith Community and Pastor Rob. Bless and keep them, use them to be our hands and feet in the world. And here at Grace God, on a day in which we celebrate Pastor Joanna's installation, we put up banners and pyramids from our 90th anniversary anniversary as we remember those who have gone before us in this church, who helped to build this building, who helped to teach Sunday school back in 1924, for those upon whose shoulders we sit and stand. Because of their generosity, we enjoy all that they have paid forward for us. And now may we with open eyes see the opportunities to bless future generations and people today in our midst out of the abundance of our time and our talents and our treasures. Lord, in your mercy, we entrust this and for all else that you see into your hands through the powerful name of Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. As we get ready to come to the table of the Lord with confession and forgiveness, I must confess, I am most captivated in my Monty Python soul with the name Simon the leper, who invited Jesus to the house to eat in Bethany as well. Because I would think that Simon the leper probably had been healed of his leprosy, but the funny thing about Simon the leper is they still called him Simon the leper even after he'd been healed. That is a Monty Pythonism if you've ever heard one. But it's all about generosity today as we come to the table because God takes what we have brought, the bread and the wine, and blesses it to be a blessing to others. So it's our profound joy to come to his table. And as we do so, let's open our hearts in a prayer of confession. Let us come before God seeking the forgiveness and life of our God. Steadfast and saving God, have mercy on us. We confess to you all the ways we have turned from you and harmed one another. In your compassion, forgive our sins and heal our hurts. Bring forth from us a harvest of righteousness, the fruits of gentleness and peacemaking, the sheaves of wisdom and justice through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand. This is the table of Christ for the people of God, for all who desire, all who hunger and thirst for the love and the mercy and the forgiveness of God. God welcomes us to his table and he reminds us how in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as you remember me. When the meal had ended, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples and all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as you remember me. And now let us pray together as our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, You may be seated. Some words of instruction this morning as we come to the table of the Lord. Just real quickly invite you to come down through the center aisle if you would like to receive. I cup your hands, we'll place the bread in your hands and you may proceed to the cup, dip the bread into the cup. The large portion has wine, the smaller portion of the cup has grape juice, dip where you would like and eat. After you have 
If you desire gluten-free bread, you'll find it in the basket, and there'll be a chalice set here for you. So we invite you this morning to come to eat, to drink, and to receive. Let us prepare the table.
Savior, keep you ever in his grace. Amen. Friends, we have some announcements. Uh, first of all, we're going to get to eat right after this, and I'm excited about that. And I hope you can join us downstairs for the luncheon. And then after that, we're going to have even more church. If this church was not enough for you, come